G'day guys, welcome back to the True Footy YouTube channel in what is kind of an Eagles Corner video, but also potentially the start of a new video series that I'm going to do this off-season. So uh, the purposes of today's video is to kind of look at uh, the West Coast Eagles and projecting what the side might look like in three years, in particular the best 22, or I've kind of made a best 24 uh, with a bit of an extended bench just to, to map it out a little bit. And uh, yeah, the, the purposes of this is to kind of project where we might be in three years from a best 22 strength point of view. And also I've listed ages by then and likely levels of experience to help out the analysis. And you can sort of project a little bit about what's going to be, uh, the, the team is going to look like in the future. Now, obviously the weakness of this analysis is that you can't project trades. Okay, so if we trade anyone in the next year, uh, which is probably going to happen on average. There's at least one per year usually. Um, and so, likewise with the draft, like we could have pick one next year and that will change the nature of this. But I suppose the point of it is not so much a prediction a prediction as such. It's kind of just map out like what our strengths and weaknesses are in terms of uh, what our young list currently looks like and what veterans are likely to be there in three years and what are not. And we can project, you know, what to what extent it is likely that we come back within three years and make finals. Uh, that was kind of the purpose of this and, and therefore if this video goes well and I can find a way to do it with all the other 17 clubs uh, I might have a crack at it bearing in mind I will be able to be way more in touch with West Coast list than other clubs as well so before I get into it if you could do me a favor and subscribe to the channel if you're enjoying the content I make general AFL content I do focus a little bit more on the Eagles uh, in separate select videos. Uh, I'm doing cricket content at the moment as well. And uh, you can find a specific Eagles playlist called Eagles Corner on this channel. And um, yeah, I'll probably start a new playlist for this video as well, which remains to be seen. But let's get into what might happen at the West Coast Eagles over the next three years. So there's a few players, veterans, that are currently still on the list that I can probably safely forecast will not be on the Eagles list in three years' time. So we're really talking about round one, 2027. By that point, uh, Andrew Gaff will be 34, as will Jack Darling, as will Jamie Cripps, as will Jeremy McGovern. So I'm going to safely assume that all of those players are not on the list by 2027. And a player that's a year younger and Elliot Yo at 33, given his history of injuries, soft tissue injuries in particular, I think it's a safe bet that he's probably retired. So that's five players from what is a currently uh, best 22. Uh, that are not going to be there. Then further to that, there's a couple of borderline players that I'm not really sure about. First of all, one of them is Tim Kelly. He is uh, going to be 32 in round one of 2027. Uh, bearing in mind like the round one is in March usually. And then there's Jaden Hunt as well, who will be 31. Tim Kelly on quality is likely still be good enough to keep playing. Uh, and because he was drafted later, he may or may not still be around. He could still have some legs and be able to have a bit of a later career. I'd probably bet on him staying, and Jaden Hunt equally as well. He will turn 32 during the 27th season, uh, so I've got him in the mix. I've got him in the mix. Then, looking at who the actual veterans on the list will be, I've got Dom Sheed still available, Tom Barras still available. Both will be 31. Liam Ryan and Liam Duggan uh, will both be 30. Now, there's probably a handful of players that I'm pretty confident in betting won't be on the list anymore. Uh, first of all, like there's players out of contract this year that I'll just name in Witherden, Rotham, and Edwards. I'm going to predict that these guys are not in the list in 12 months, let alone in 36 months. Callum Jamison is also probably pretty line ball to be around still. Um, those are probably the other ones, just to map out where we're, like our framework, our starting point. Those are probably the players I'm going to exclude. So I'm gonna get up on the screen now, uh, best 23. Now, it's color coded and there's a lot of numbers flying around, so let me explain it first. The color code, it is based upon my confidence in which they are still going to be contributing to a best 22 this time in three years. So if they're green, it means I'm pretty confident they're gonna not only be there, but probably be best 22. In yellow, they're players that um, I think are a chance to make it, but are, are far from, from safe. So for instance, you know, Harley Reid hasn't played a game yet, but I'm pretty confident he's gonna be in our best 22 in three years. And that applies to Alan, Marek, Jinby, Hewitt, um, we probably disagree on some of the colors. But in yellow, I've got players that I think could make it and I'm still hopeful make it, obviously. For any players that I really didn't think would make it, for instance, your Luke Edwards, your Josh Rothams, they're not in this uh, best 26 at all. Um, and then I will elaborate on, on other players that kind of don't fit either category. Um, but yeah, so now for the numbers. The first number is their age uh, by round one of 2027. And I think I've got them pretty much right. And the number 
is roughly how many games experience they will have by then. Okay, so to, to how do you work that out? Because you can't forecast like injuries and stuff like that. I generally thought that in my head, if they're a best 22 player, they're pretty much picked every week. You, your Dom Sheeds, your Kellys, um, you know, ignoring injury, Oscar Allen, then I'd probably add 20 games a season. There's 23 games in a season for an AFL team and uh, allowing for injury suspension and stuff like that. That is the best case scenario. Uh, for other players like a, um, you know, a Harry Barnett, um, he's in this team as the Ruckman there. Uh, he'll be 23. I've put about 15. It's a rough approximation, but I think if we're seeing too much of Harry Barnett over the next two to three years, then we're probably not doing so well from an injury point of view because he's a development player. But uh, yeah, there we go. So you can see the back line, first of all, is where we have a, a pretty good mix of yellow and green. Now, I really like Kirk, Kobe Bergio and I'm pretty confident about him. That being said, obviously he hasn't debuted yet and he has got uh, a bit of a hamstring injury history dare I say he just had surgery on it so I'm not going to put him in green yet I think that would be overconfident although I do like the look of him I also really like Rhett Bazo but let's face it as a young key position player the trajectory of those guys careers can be all over the place so I'm quietly confident I'm more confident on him than I am Harry Edwards who again may or may not be on the list I mean he's out of contract at the end of this year but I still think there's talent there's enough to work with there um, and then Barras will still be on the list. Hoff and Duggan. Duggan's just been made captain, and he'll only be 30. So th those guys, are, I'm pretty confident, will be in the team there. The midfield, uh, another interesting one. I mean, some people might argue that Sheed probably doesn't belong in this team. Uh, I disagree. I think he will be still there. I think he will still be best 22 and at 31. I think he's got the the playing style and the attributes where he, he doesn't rely on his athleticism. Now, you know what I mean? There's a center square midfielder who doesn't really rely on his pace um, at the moment. I think he has the style that's conducive to playing later in his career. At 31, he's not too old anyway. So Harley Reid, I've got as a 21-year-old, 20 games a season, hopefully 60 games of experience. Jinby and Hewitt as the midfield mix there. Chester on the wing is obviously speculative, but we don't actually have too many other wing options around that age that are going to be available. So I've put Jaden Hunt there on the extended bench. You know, he could still be better than Chesser in three years' time, but I'm obviously hopeful that that's not the case because I'm you know, back in my boy Chesser. But there's a lack of wing options, and I think Chesser does have some ice attributes. But nonetheless, not looking as com uh, as assured as Jinby and Hewitt, who I'm pretty damn confident about, will at least be best 22 players. So that's the uh, explanation of that mix. The forward line, um, this one I'm pretty confident about. Like Liam Ryan is good enough to be, still be playing at 30 for sure. Noah Long, Tim Kelly, I've slapped on a forward flank on the basis that maybe he won't be a primary on baller at the age of 32 when we've got Reed, Jinby, and Hewitt. That being said, the uh, the midfield mix there of Jinby, Hewitt, and Reed, uh, 22, 22, and 21 with a 23 rolled on the wing. So that is a very young mix, and it's a good mix, but it probably won't be a great mix three years from now. Therefore, they will still rely on rotations on ball from Tim Kelly, etc. Maybe even a Liam Duggan. Um, because for what? Well, we know why. We didn't draft well for a number of years. We don't have any good 25 to 26 year old midfielders really on the list. Um, and we, you know, it probably would be guys like O'Neill um, had he not just been delisted. In this hypothetical situation, I've got Harry Barnett as the primary ruck. Like I said, Bailey Williams playing forward ruck. Uh, I'm pretty confident on, on Bailey Williams. Jermaine Jones and Jake Waterman slept on the bench. Again, like I think these guys are probably good enough, but I'm not going to necessarily say they're locked and loaded to be in our best 22 in three years. Tom Cole, uh, more so. I think Tom Cole strikes me as a player that will improve with age, and I think on his day, he's actually still a good player. Clay Hall, Jack Petricelli, Jaden Hunt. Again, I'm still not too sure what the evolution of those players will look like in three years, even though I've talked up Hall. And I even was very big on Petrocelli this year and Jaden Hunt. Um, but I hope you understand what I mean by that. So what does this tell us? What does it tell us? Well, it tells us that in three years time, if we had hopes of really shooting up the ladder, we're still going to have a very green midfield bookended by a couple of veterans in Sheed and Kelly, who will be in their early thirties. And then some really good prime on ballers in Reed, Jinby and Hewitt who are going to be fast, athletic, powerful uh, to some extent skillful as well but primarily athletic beasts and it's going to be a dynamic on ball division. However, in three years there's still only going to be about 60-70 games of AFL experience, still only be 22-21. So the idea that we are going to evolve into a really good competitive top six side within the three years I think uh, on that alone it makes me a little bit 
skeptical unless we trade in a prime midfielder, which is entirely possible. It also tells me that we probably need to really address our key back situation. When I say address, I don't mean that it's dire at the moment, but what I would say is in 12 months time, if we are still not sure about Harry Edwards or Rhett Bazo, then it's probably trying, time to draft someone as a key defender. Bearing in mind as well, you know, Jeremy McGovern is not in this squad in, in 2027. And I've got a little reserve squad behind this as well. And there are no other key backs on the list. So we're going to need to draft one regardless any way you would suggest. There's a couple of other players that I, I haven't included here. Um, they just quite didn't quite make the cut. Obviously, there's Harvey Johnston. There's Jai Cully. I think personal opinion. This all comes down to personal opinion. But I just think they're less likely to be best 22 or 26 even uh, in three years' time. Jordan Baker and Tyrell Dewar, again, can't be rookies that I've never actually seen play myself, although they seem to be developing okay. There's two young developing key forward talls, Archer Reed and Jack Williams. Archer Reed will be 21 and probably just starting to get ready for AFL games, but obviously I don't think he's best 26 in this scenario when you've considered I am a big fan of Marek and Oscar Allen and Bailey Williams. Williams of the Jack variety strikes me as he could be a good depth ruck tall forward uh, for a, an extended period of time and contribute pretty well. But I just don't think he's in our ideal best 23 or six in three years' time. Uh, Matthew Flynn, I also sort of pushed out for Harry Barnett. I just think he's a bit of a higher level talent. Again, uh, Flynn hasn't played a game for us yet. So that's that one's just a bit of a hunch. Uh, Locke Rawlinson was another one as well, who is just pick one in the rookie draft. I have no idea if he's any good. So this list kind of gives us two two uh, points of view, okay? So we, we can look at how good our team is likely to be in 2027. And uh, I still think it needs work. Good thing is we still have draft picks and trade op opportunities in between now and 2027. But this helps you map out what our holes are. And I would say running defenders, um, you know, there's no other running defenders other than Jordan Baker in this list that I've left out, assuming that Witherden and Rotherham are also not around, which is also my personal opinion. We could still use another quality wingman. Forward line looks pretty sweet, to be honest. It's, it's coming along, both tall and small. Um, and the ruck situation, obviously, that one's kind of a wait and see, but I like that we've invested in a Harry Barnett. So you can't really complain about that. What I will say, though, as well, is uh, this is around the time... 2027, where we'll start to see the fruits of giving guys like Noah Long, Ryan Marrick, Hewitt and Jinby heaps of opportunity at AFL level. Because I think by 2027, if those guys, if those game tally counts of 60, 75, 70, 80, if they're somewhat accurate, those players will be a lot better off than if they'd say play 20 or 30 games. And they have the opportunity now to be in the best 22 for the next three years and develop as a group. So looking at the quality of that list, extrapolating it, I think that side is probably outside chance for finals. So um, surprise, surprise, a rebuild hasn't finished yet. There's still a top hand talent we need to add to the list. And I think overall it's going to be a longer process than, than us Eagles fans are accustomed to because our previous rebuilds have been relatively short. Um, but, you know, that's also you know, a, kind of a sign of confidence that just because I don't think this side, this uh, best 26 is, you know, a premiership quality side or a top four quality side, it doesn't mean I'm right. Like at the end of 2010, nobody would have thought that we would make the top four the following year. And we did. So football doesn't really work in this way. But I thought it was a worthwhile analysis to see uh, what can we expect from investing in some of these guys now? And what will our team realistically look like in three years? How long is this journey back? Anyway, guys, let me know in the comments what you agree with or disagree with. I have been fairly harsh, I think, with the assessments there. Although there's probably fans out there thinking I'm too positive with some of the green colors there. But in terms of extrapolating this team and how good it could be in three years, I'm, I'm very hesitant. I'm very hesitant. And I don't think necessarily this is going to be a short process. But regardless, we enjoy the ride. Uh, I do love rebuilds in a sense. Like as shit it is to lose, it's fun seeing talent nurtured together playing well together and having fun. So as always, I look forward to your input. Subscribe to the channel if you haven't already and I'll see you in the next video, guys. Cheers.